you have your Bibles this morning, I pray that you do, or your devices, come with me to familiar scripture in Proverbs, third chapter, verse 9 and 10. I'll read it out of the New King James, and then I'll jump over and, and read it again from the English Standard Version, just to get it a little brighter. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. When you have it, say, I have it. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so shall your barns be, be your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Let me read it in the English Standard Version. Under the Lord with your wealth, and with the first fruits of all your produce, then your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will be bursting with wine. Somebody say the good stuff. The subject this morning is put God first. Everyone that can and have voice and put that in the atmosphere say, let's put God first. I was in prayer and fasting this week and I just kept hearing the Lord say first, first, first. It's the first Sunday of a year we've never had before. And I know that we've Move through a few days, of course. It was the day is the seventh, but we come to a place where we're going to start out putting God first. Some of you will start tithing this year and trusting God at those, with those kingdom principles. Some of you will start serving this year and trusting God with your talent and becoming gift and a gift to the kingdom. Some of you will start witnessing this year. But whatever you're going to do, how you start out is the way you're going to end up. So let's put God first. Put in the atmosphere one more time. Put God first. Put God first. No, excuses. no excuses. Put God, put God first. first. Yeah. Um, in Nehemiah, just for, to, to, parif- to, uh, to reference, the 10th chapter and verse 35 through 37 Verse 35, particularly in Nehemiah 10, he says, Bring the first fruits of our ground and the first fruits of all fruit of all trees year by year. They were supposed to bring this to the house of the Lord year by year. They would hold it and bring it year by year. But I wanted you to see in the latter part of that, the verse 37, he says, And that ye should bring the first fruits of your dough, of your bread, and the offering and the fruit of all manner of trees, of wine and all oil, and unto the priests and into the chambers of the house of the Lord. Um, if you check that scripture out in Nehemiah 10 and 37, as we're reading there, he says, you to bring this to the priests. The first fruits then goes to the priests. Then he goes on and says, and the tithes of our ground unto the, and the tithes, Levites. So the tithes help run the church. And the Levites, those that are serving in the church, they are recipients of the tithe. That's how the house of the Lord runs. Let me break it down. If your husband comes home and he casts his check every time he comes home, before he comes home, and just give you a piece of money to run the house, it's not truly the full amount to run the house. He just casts the checks and Nick's cash checking. You gotta live in LA to catch that. It just went right past you. But he comes home and said, This is all I have. A good, a good uh, proverbial, proverbial woman could run it, but it's gonna be challenging and difficult because it takes XYZ dollars to run the house. So we need everything in one pot and then we operate from that account to run the house. Amen? Oh, you're still not getting it. Okay, <clears throat> if you're gonna get married, he has his account, you have your account. If you get married and you still got, he still got his account, you got your account, y'all gonna have different accounting principles. Because you don't have an account for the house. And the house is the biggest corporation, the biggest business you're gonna run. So you gotta see what she's putting in the pot, what he's putting in the pot, so the pot could have something in it to take care of the corporation. So all of us have our different homes and we all bring something to put into the pot. And this is a big house to run. Oh, yes, it is. But God knew that we would have quality people to help run the house and take care of the house 
instead of coming up short on what our responsibilities are. So there's first fruits and there's tithes of the ground. The Levites might have the tithes of all the city to till therein. Many have sometimes confused first fruits under the Lord with the first fruits of thy substance of all the increase. First fruits with tithes, they're different in every way. There is first fruits, there's tithes, there's alms, and that's fast, but it's in our new members. You should not book. have been in the church all you should not these have been in the years, years and you're still struggling with just giving an offering. It's your house too. <laughs> But sometimes it takes a while for you to, to get it. But I'm going to try to help us all put God first. I believe the tithes and the first fruits offering, they're different. Tithe is tenth. First fruit is first. Um, if I'm going to give the Lord tenth, I have to count from one to ten. Help me count. Go. Stop. The tenth goes to God. Amen. But if I'm going to give my first fruits, it's going to be. And the first goes to the priest. Amen. It's the first of its kind. It's a faith that I believe I'm going to be making at least mm, five, six thousand dollars a year this year. I'm believing God for that. Now, I need more than that. But I'm believing God for that. So I want to give the first of its kind. So I go to work. I may work one hour or I work just for that day. And my faith says, I'm going to sow this first seed. I'm going to give this to the priest. And I still have to count to 10 to give God his tithe. Because that belongs to him. And it's holy. The level of faith now to give in the first fruits, it brings blessings that you have not tapped into yet. It's not a, 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 not a gimmick to try to get something from you. It's trying to get something to you. And that's the level, another level of faith in giving. Yes. I'm putting this seed in the ground first. My first fruits I'm giving unto the priest. Amen. Um, tithe is tenth. We just added, just went through that. We see that the tenth one belongs to the Lord. It goes to him. It's okay. I often, when I was teaching this years ago, I said, I'm glad God didn't take the 90 yeah. and leave me the 10 <laughs> and say, figure it out. But he trusts us all to be stewards and to give as he has prospered, prospered us. Putting God first, we honor him. To honor is high respect. When years ago, when, when we were, Mary and I were younger, just, just kids just starting out, and here comes the baby, here comes the second baby, and started looking at those bills. I mean, I don't know, I think many of you should have um, today online payment, but you do have an account of your bills. It starts here, car payment, car insurance that you never want to use. Okay, that part. And health insurance that you never want to use, but you have it for the insurance. All these things are lined up on your ledger, on your, on your, paper, on your page, but if you put tithe at the bottom, when it comes time for tithe, after you have paid all these things, you have nothing left over. And then the preacher start teaching like this on Sunday morning, and you're going to get quiet. You're going to get upset. I thought you were going to holler this morning. Oh, I'm hollering right now. I'm, I'm screaming. <laughs> but I have to put it in order, so it must start out on my ledger. So Mary and I have to put it up at the top. So it starts out with tithe. Then car note, then car insurance, and utilities, and rent. And it goes all the way down. So I went to my bishop. I said, um, this girl don't know how to keep accounting. She's spending up all the money. And we ain't got nothing. He said, get another job. <laughs> you ain't making enough money as it is. $32,000 a year. You can't live on that by yourself. You shouldn't have never got married. I said, oh. He was good for me. It helped me. It helped me step my game up. Help me realize that I couldn't hurry as a family making $12, $15 an hour. Some can, but I couldn't. And I thank God for the, for the insight and the progress So uh, to move forward. That your vats, Proverbs uh, 3, 9, and 10, that your vats uh, will overflow. Somebody say overflow. As I honor the Lord and I move into this level of giving and, and, and tithing, I live in overflow. 
it, it's, it's, it's amazing how God can have, uh, give you, uh, what's that, residual income. He just makes it, keeps growing. You look up, and how did I get this? I thought by now I would not have anything. But God knows how to bless and stretch that little bit. When you give it to him, he is faithful, church. What happens, Pastor? Here it is, 2 Corinthians, track with me this morning. 2 Corinthians 8 and 5. And this they did not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Paul speaking to the church of Corinth, and he's asking them to help him out with the other poor churches that are suffering. But they could not do it unless they gave themselves first. You have to put God first, and by doing that, you give up yourself first. Amen? Um, if you give of yourself first, God honors that. It's a principle that you see that, that Lord, I trust you, and you're going to take care of the rest. If I don't get you to commit to the Lord, then you're sure not going to commit to Clinton. Amen. But if you come, then I know God's going to touch your heart and you're going to give to the purpose of the kingdom. Nah. It's, it's, it's something that we give to what we want to have and what we like. And we will make ends meet just so we could get what we want. I know it's expensive, but I, I got to maintain this. I don't know what y'all saying. And I'm getting the discount. It's just $75. That's why I don't cry in church, because I ain't dropping these out. These, these are expensive. Except that for three hours to get them weaved in. You know? Please. Even though things are tough, we give to what we want. You look at your neighbor and say, you know he ain't talking about you. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's put God first. For the month of January, just get one eye done. <laughs> and one hand on the nails. Somebody throw me an amen, please. Thank you. I had to hold on to a few of these. I'm going to work this morning. Put him first. It's a principle here. That we give ourselves first. The late uh, Deacon Velton Queen, when I first started pastoring, Deacon Velton Queen was around. And I'm struggling, a little young preacher. And I think Sunday morning's offering was like $350. And we're trying to just get this building off the ground and trying to get this church going. And Deacon Queen would come in. He would just be real, just a strong military guy. He says, he said, you got to go out there and get that money out their mouth. I said, what? <laughs> he said, remember that fish that Peter caught? The money was in the fish's mouth. I said, I said I'm going to go out there and pull money out of people's mouths? I said, what are you saying, Deacon? He says, I don't know anybody that asked somebody else to hold their money. Because somebody said, the money's on you. It's, you, you. Yeah. it's in your pocket. It's in your purse. You got it right now. And if things get really bad, you're going to stretch out that credit card a little bit more to go and get what you want, even though you don't need it. But if the church says use your credit card to give, how dare them? I, that's a sacrilege. I, I'm going to use my card to pick, give an offering. But you hit it to get your eyes. Giving is not God's way of raising money. Say that with me. Giving, Giving is, not is not God's way, God's way of, raising money. of raising money. But giving, giving. is God's way God's of, raising us. of raising us. Let me see your hand if you've been on a cheap date. And even though it was cheap, you had to pay for it. How many of those dates did you go on? Not many. All that talk and we're at McDonald's sharing fries and splitting a burger. This is the last date. It's raising awareness. Our money is an essential part of our worship. Your money is a central part of your worship. As you, as you give an offering, it shows God, you're worth it. So I don't tip God. 
I give over and above. I don't make it feel like, uh, well, here, you, you, you need it. God doesn't need your money. House does. <laughs> to take care of God's business. God needs you to grow up and give according to he has prospered you. Giving is an important part of our lives overall. Giving shows that we give of our skill, our talent, our time, and our strength to the kingdom of God. Tithe is a principle, and scripturally, in ways, we put God's first with our money. And by giving of first fruits, your income begins to flow. And you bring that income that God gives you to the local church. Now, I know some of you tie to several pastors, and you give to several ministries. But when you need help, you come to your local church. And your church should be there with reserve to be able to help you. Not give your hand out, but a hand up. But you minimize your local church because he's not a, a wide or a noted televangelism. But you give to them because it just is exciting to know I'm on their mailing list. And I am also a part of their, their, their inner circle. But you cannot call them to come and see about you or your family. Not going to happen. If you did, they're going to call me and ask me, could I go by and check on you? You bring it to your local church, and you wish the Lord with that tithe and with that first fruits, and therein we take it and spread it out throughout the world. It becomes a, a mission. It's not just local within the church, but it goes abroad. Tithing put God's first. Tithing put God first. When you put him first, it goes, again, to kingdom principles. And you tell the Lord, Lord, you can trust me with what you've given me. And every opportunity that I get to give, I'm going to give. And I'm going to be liberal and happy in giving. Because I'm putting you first. You can't love on God that hard and he don't respond. I know you have needs, but you dare to trust me to put me first. You make me move on your behalf. Jacob says it in Genesis 28, 20, and 22. Jacob said, if God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going and give me bread to eat, clothes to put on, so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. Genesis 28, 20, 22. The Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I have set up as a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. Trusting that God would keep him, and that God would watch over him, and that God would protect him. He vowed a promise. Of all that you give me, I'll give you a tenth. I won't forget who's been watching and keeping me. I won't forget who's been protecting and keeping me from harm. I know Esau is after me, but if you keep me from this enemy, when I get back to the house, I promise I'll give you a tenth. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday has passed. Saturday, you still are in good health. Now it's Sunday. It's regathering back to where the enemy did not want you to come. I'm not giving because of what I got. I'm giving because of what you've already gave me. I worship you with my offering because you're worth it. I can't pay for you to keep me, but I'll do all I can to say thank you with everything I have. Not 50% yet, just a tenth. Promise you I'll do that. And God did that for Jacob. God has a financial system for his church, and he knows how the church is going to be sustained, and he used people to do that. And he says, we bring this, he says, we bring these things into the storehouse. Malachi, in the context there of three and eight, he was trying to awaken the responsibility of God's people. Nehemiah had the same idea when Sam Ballad and Tobiah came and tried to overthrow God's work. 
I'm still scratching my head about that story of Nehemiah and Sam Ballad them. And after Nehemiah went down there and got everything cleaned up and got the house of God back in order, he cleaned out the storehouse. But Sam Ballad and Tobiah moved into the storehouse. Working that out of the grid, working that out. Nehemiah had to go back down there and tell Sam Ballad and, to, and Tobias, you have nothing to do with this. Get out of God's business and clean out the storehouse so the storehouse can be filled. Here it was an awakening and bringing them back to God's responsibility in Malachi 3 and 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offering. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. A lot in that context, let me just say it again. You cannot curse what God has blessed. But you can be under a penalty of not obeying God. Are you saying, I'm not saying you're cursed. Jesus took the curse and nailed it to the cross. But I'm under a penalty of not having all that I should have because I am not obedient and responsible to the Lord. That's the bad part of it. To just be obedient to what God is asking you to do and me to do. Malachi was teaching us that tithing and offering belongs to the Lord. And to not give tithes uh, can be self-imposed penalties upon ourselves. Because I've held what belongs to God. I can't get ahead. I can't get by. I'm always coming up short. I'm always in between my next blessing. I'm barely making it, barely making it, barely making it. I got holes in my bags. Nothing prosperous or prosperous in my life because I'm keeping back that that belongs to God. Malachi 3 and 11, he says, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops if you give to me. And the vine in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe. Says the Lord Almighty. I'm reading from the NIV. As you give, God is protecting your field. He's protecting your money. He's protecting your children. Protecting doctor bills. He's covering you from stuff that you had no idea was being, being covered from. Just because you're sowing into a place where you don't know where it's going to come up at. Everything's not coming back in money. Sometimes it's just Jesus built a fence around me. And gives me access to heaven when I need it. Malachi 3, 10, 11. Bring it to the storehouse. It's a worship formation. The full amount of the tithe, the whole tithe, into the, into the storehouse, the local church. As you do this, he says, there will be food in my house. The church will not have to lack for anything. Everything will be here as we need it. And we've paid this thing off a long time ago. But still, it's the maturity and the education, understanding that it's a part of my responsibility it's not equal sacrificing, it's equal, it's not equal giving, it's equal sacrificing. Everybody has to give something that you don't have, but it's at your level. Financial maturity takes place here, first fruits. First fruits is bringing the first of its kind of the harvest to the Lord. We went over that. And Deuteronomy 26 and 10, behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which the Lord have given me. The first, he says here, in this context of Deuteronomy 26 and 10, you bring it in, it says, from the, from the field, the first fruits of the harvest, as you remove the holy tithe. Remember that in Deuteronomy 26 and 13, the tithe is holy. The first fruits of the harvest goes to the priest, and you bring it in, and you give it to the man of God, the priest, the leader of the church, so he there can be encouraged. The first fruits principles here in Leviticus 20, 23 and 10, the Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, when you enter the land, I am going to give you and you, ripe, you, 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 you reap its harvest. Bring the priests, the sheave of the first grain of your harvest, Leviticus 23, 10. When you come into that land, they were going into a place that God has promised. And they came into that land. The first thing they did was to bring that sheave to the priest. So we thank God that we made it to where we are. Let me break it down. I finally prayed for this job. I didn't have the job nor even transportation. Now I got the job. The first thing I want to remember is the person that prayed for me to get the job. So I'm going to come in and give a seed to say thank you for allowing me to go up under this prayer and get this job. Now that I got a car and God knows I needed a car because I got tired of Uber, Lyft, and everybody else, everything else. Now that I got a car and I get selfish with my car and I don't bring nobody to church. I need to take what God has given me and use it for an instrument to bless others. Yeah. 
bring this produce, bring this produce. Deuteronomy 26, 1 through 15, bring it to the house of the Lord. It goes to the priest, Ezekiel 44 and 30. The best of the first fruit, Ezekiel 44, 30. And all your special gifts will belong to the priest, Ezekiel 44, 30. It is the best, the best of the first fruits, first of its kind. I'm going to come and bring this special gift to the priest. Mm -hmm. And the fruits of the ground. So that a blessing may rest on your household. You mean to tell me, by the act of faith of giving God the best I have and bringing it to the priests, that a blessing, do y'all see that in your Bible? Some of y'all ain't looking at it. Could you put that up on the screen, Ezekiel 4430, please? Put up the big, big, if you can, blow it up, blow it up. I got, I got five more minutes, okay. Can you guys get it up there, Ezekiel? Y'all not up there either? I'm sorry, frankly, we got it? Ezekiel 4430? Anyway, it's in the Bible. And it, go, it goes on the 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. After you do that and the blessing rests in your house of Ezekiel 44, 30, he said, God is able to make all grace. Somehow all grace. all grace. See, this grace favor here comes by my obedience to God. And grace is needed when you're in a tough place. And grace comes to bring sufficiency in all things. Say, God will make all grace favor abound towards you. That you always having all sufficiency in all. I like this scripture. It's just got all, all in it. All sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Somebody holler, no lack. You want to know how other believers get real fast or ahead? Scriptural living. Believing God's word. Trusting him. That I have all sufficiency. I'm not broke. I'm in between blessings. I got everything I need. It's coming. It's already there. And God knows when to step me right into it. I don't stress out, worry out, or fall out. I, I, I jump out. I roll on the floor with insanity. I know God has set me up to trust him one more time. When it looks like it's impossible, then dun 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 dun. It's a God move about to happen. He knows when to come, and he comes right on time. Raise your right hand and say, Jesus. Make up the difference. He knows how to put you in a place where you need me. Because you can have all the money you want, but you can't get them demons out your house. But God will give you grace favor to tell the demons you are evicted in the name of Jesus. To look at those kids that you cannot police, that you cannot orchestrate back into order. You can just wave one hand and say, I plead the blood of Jesus over your crazy acting self. You're going to get yourself together because I have favor with God. Somebody say, all grace. He will make it more sufficient for you than you would ever, can ever imagine. He will make it for you. All grace abound towards you. That's favor. Let me finish this this morning. I'm going to pick this up ne next week. I, I wanted just to show you this in, in honoring the Lord and first fruits and giving. First Kings 17, this jumped at me uh, um, uh, this, this morning. But Elijah said unto her, First Kings 17, verse 13, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you said. But make a little bread for me first fruits. Now, you, you, you preached it, you've seen it. He says, don't get fearful now. I'm not trying to get you to give up everything you got. Even though it's Vegas, I don't want you to go all in. But I want you to put something in. He said, just give me a little. King James says, and afterwards. My God, that was my running car right there. Look at somebody said, you mean to tell me I'm going to have after, after I've given seemingly all that I had. 
If you trust God with a little, baby girl, you will have after, 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 and after. You will never run out. Not a lot. Come on, look at somebody and say, just, just a little. Get, get that little thing in your mind and watch God do this. Do what you said. The afterwards, go and prepare a meal for yourself and your son. That prophet knew that God had to back up his word. That if I'm going to tell you to give, God's got to give to you before you even let it go. He has to be faithful to his word. I know what God told me to do. Yes, I'm in Zarephath, but once you give it, then look for the after. I prophesied this morning that you're going to live in the after and overflow this year. As you give as God has proportioned you, you're going to have what you need when you need it. When you can't... Somebody talk back to me and say, a little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. You can't get away from God's principle of the way he does things. Not saying a lot, just a little. And watch what he does. Watch what he does. Watch what he does. Listen. Um, bless you, baby. Bless you. I, I got to finish this. I got to finish it. Look. Now sit down. You're making me nervous. This is it. First Kings 17. But make a small cake for me first. That's the testing of your faith. When you can put God's man first, I put God's first in your tithing two principles, and bring it to me, he said, and afterwards, there it is in verse 13, make some for yourself and your son, for this is what the Lord says, the God of Israel is saying, there will always be flour, oil left in your containers, my God. Until the time when the Lord sends rain upon your crops. You're going to always have something. Every time you go back to that account, it's like, my, I don't know. I know it should be overdraft, but I, it's in there. I understand that. I, I didn't pay everything down. Some things on auto pay. I know this account should be broke. But God has a way of slipping in. The Bible says... So she did as Elijah said. And she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. You're trying to just get one meal. God's trying to give you many days. He's trying to have you to the place where you're barbecuing every Saturday. You ain't worried about nothing. It's July. It's January and you're still having a, a whole potluck. He knows how to stretch your life out in a way that would blow your mind. People that make more money on up, people that make more money than you can't live like you live. Because the blessings of the Lord, they make you so rich and add no sorrow. You can walk around with bold confidence. I am not on those that are living in lack. I'm living in an abundance. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Give somebody a high five and say, and heaven ain't broke. That's the God that you serve when you put God first. Shake two hands to him. You know God's worth it. It all belongs to him. Even that you're holding out on this morning, it still belongs to God. Put God first. Put that in the atmosphere. Put God first. Say it again. Say it again. Stand up with your authority. With your authority. Put some with your, and put your hand like this and say it again. Say it again. Say it again. One more time. Some of y'all scared to say it. Break up the atmosphere. Come on, Zion. Put God first. Somebody give God a praise in this house.
Encourage one person on them this year. If you do that, the blessing will overtake you. You will not have room enough to receive it. It will overflow and overflow and overflow in the name of Jesus.